Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As Egyptians took to the ballot stations on the second day to vote on the referendum on the constitutional amendments, uh, we have more uh, to ask about uh, with the, the uh, third uh, day of uh, the uh, of uh, the uh, uh, voting uh, in, uh, in across the world, and the second day here in Egypt, uh, we'll be having more details. But uh, we'll watch a special report, and we'll be right back. Polling stations across Egypt opened their doors to the second day on the referendum on the constitutional amendments. There are currently 10,878 central polling stations and 13,919 polling stations across the country that have opened their doors for voters from Saturday till Monday. More than 61 million Egyptians are eligible to vote in the referendum. Earlier on Saturday, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi cast his vote in Martyr Mustafa Yusri, a Mediya school in Heliopolis district in Cairo. According to the National Elections Authority, Egyptians who live in governorates outside the local election constituencies can still vote at special polling station reserved for out of governorate voters. Head of the National Elections Authority, Lashina Ibrahim, said that around 20,000 judges will supervise the voting process at ballot boxes and 55 local civil society groups, five foreign non-governmental organizations and three national councils are monitoring the vote. Meanwhile, the cabinet's central operations room started following up on the referendum process on the amendments. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli announced that he is following up on the voting process around the clock through operation rooms to communicate with the governors via video conference so as to ensure that all logistical support is provided during the referendum. The constitutional amendments referendum kicked off on Friday for expatriates till Sunday in 140 Egyptian consulates and embassies in 124 countries. Egyptians are voting on the proposed amendments to the 2014 Charter which were overwhelmingly approved by the parliament on Tuesday, with 531 out of 596 members in favor, while 22 against and one is stained. Meanwhile, the military spokesmen have confirmed that the plan of the armed forces to secure the referendum on the constitutional amendments had been carried out through a number of security access. Spokesman Temer Refai added that the plan aimed at securing 10,878 polling stations across the country in full coordination and cooperation with the Ministry of Interior. In a statement, the military spokesman noted that in accordance with the directives of the General Commander of the Armed Forces, elements from the field armies, the military zones and the major branches of the Armed Forces have been deployed in the polling station since last Thursday as the quick as possible for any response and the special forces to work as a backup for the immediate and the quick response to face any emergencies in cooperation with the security patrols from the military police and the elements from the Ministry of Interior to intensify the security presence to ensure the preservation of the security around the polling stations. The RFAI said that the securing of the voting process has been monitored by taking a number of measures using the security monitoring aircrafts as well as ground and aerial vision to transfer a live footage of the events to the operation rooms and to immediately report anything that may hinder the voting process. This is in addition to the presence of the operation rooms in all the governorates and the general committees to receive any security complaints. Within the framework of securing the voting process, the Health Ministry had put a comprehensive medical plan to secure the voting on the constitutional amendments. The plan included providing 2,087 ambulances to be distributed around the polling stations nationwide and intensifying the presence of the medical team in all hospitals and putting them on higher. The Health Ministry is also holding emergency meetings at the Ministry headquarters throughout the whole day, as well as allocating a hotline that is 16474 to receive any complaints or inquiries.
Minister of Interior Mahmoud Tawfiq called for continuing the security plan stages, pointing to the necessity of firmly phasing any outlast trials. During following up the security measures from the main operation theater at the security sector, the Minister of Interior makes sure for implementing the security plans and easing any obstacles to provide the suitable atmosphere for the voting process. President Abdel Fattah Sisi voted on Saturday in the Heliopolis suburb of Cairo in a referendum on constitutional amendments. Egypt's First Lady, Mrs. Intasar Sisi, also voted in uh, Marta Mustafa Yusri School in Cairo's Heliopolis district. Nearly 61 million Egyptians began voting on Saturday in the referendum, which started inside Egypt on April the 20th for three days. Earlier, the National Election Authority said that it took all the necessary procedures to facilitate the voting process on the constitutional amendments for the voters, particularly for the people with special needs. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli voted on Saturday in the referendum on the constitutional amendments. After voting, Madbouli gave statements to the encouraging of the Egyptians to participate in the referendum and practice the right to vote on the amendments. Madbouli said that voting will reflect the atmosphere of stability and democracy Egypt is witnessing. He added that holding a referendum on the constitutional amendments was a message to the whole world ensuring political stability in Egypt. The Prime Minister noted that the government is committed to providing all logistics needed for the National Election Authority to carry out the referendum and to allow the citizens to practice their constitutional right and vote in the referendum on the constitutional amendments. Meanwhile, the Cabinet called on citizens to participate in the referendum on the constitutional amendments. Egyptian experts conclude on Sunday voting and the referendum on the constitutional amendments in the Egyptian embassies and consulates in 124 countries. The head of the National Election Authority, Lashin Ibrahim, said that all the facilities are provided to the Egyptians abroad to cast their ballots freely. More details in this report. Egyptian expatriates conclude on Sunday voting in the referendum on the constitutional amendments in the Egyptian embassies and consulates in 124 countries. The voting runs from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., according to the local time of each country, from April 19th to April 21st. A large number of Egyptians worldwide rallied to cast their ballots, especially in the Arab countries such as Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Bahrain and Morocco. Egyptians in the United States, Canada, Britain, France, Belgium, Italy and, and other Western countries as well as Australia, New Zealand, Romania, Japan, South Korea, China and Afghanistan also rallied to participate in the referendum on the constitutional amendments. Women, youth, people with special needs, elderly citizens also flocked to the polling stations in the Egyptian diplomatic missions to cast their ballot in the referendum. Head of the National Election Authority, Lashin Ibrahim, said that the Immigration Ministry, Foreign Ministry and the National Election Authority are in continuous cooperation and coordination regarding the referendum on constitutional amendments abroad. He added that all facilities are provided to the Egyptians abroad to cast their ballots freely. The National Election Authority also said that the first day of voting on constitutional amendments witnessed huge turnout, adding that it did not receive any complaints earlier. Egyptian embassies called on citizens to vote in the referendum on the constitutional amendments, emphasizing that the voters could review information on the constitutional amendments as well as the voting rules through the National Election Authority website. For their part, the Egyptian communities abroad reiterated their keenness to participate in the voting and the referendum on the constitutional amendments.
The head of the Arab League mission to follow up with the constitutional amendments referendum, Haifa Abu Ghazela, loaded the voting process as well as the vital role played by the National Election Authority in supervising the referendum. This came during her inspection of a number of polling stations in Karwas district of Zamalek. She said that the voting process began smoothly in polling stations, adding that the voters asserted that the referendum's logistics were available. She noted that the voters highlighted the key role played by the army and the police in securing the voting process. President Abdel Fattah Sisi is to receive Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas on Sunday. During his stay, Abbas is set to take part in an Arab League meeting of foreign ministers called by Palestine to tackle the recent developments in the occupied territories. And the presidential spokesman, Ambassador Bassem Maradi, said that President Abdel Fattah Sisi firmly condemns the cowardly terrorist attacks that occurred on Sunday in Sri Lanka. He said President Sisi paid condolences to the families of the victims in the attack. President Sisi said that black terrorism badly impacts the stability and security of the nations as it targets the innocent regardless of their religion everywhere. President Sisi also called on the international community to exert utmost efforts to face the terrorism. Meanwhile, the toll in a series of eight blasts in Sri Lanka on Sunday has risen to at least 207, with over 450 people wounded. Suicide bombers were involved in at least two of the deadly blasts that tripped through churches and hotels in Sri Lanka. The eighth blast in a house in a northern suburb of the capital, Colombo, was caused by a suicide bomber who detonated his explosives when police entered the residence to search it. The explosion brought down the upper level of the house and killed three police officers. The nature of the other blast has not yet been confirmed and there was no immediate claim of responsibility for the deadly attacks. The worst act of violence in Sri Lanka since the end of the country's bloody civil war was a decade ago. Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli expressed support for the Somali government to achieve stability and boost the security in Somalia. In his meeting with the Somali Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Madbouli said that Egypt is ready to provide the Somali government with technical support and training. For his part, the Somali Foreign Minister said that his country values historical relations with Egypt, pointing out that Egypt is the best partner for Somalia and its people. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli met the deputy head of the Chinese giant cell phone manufacturer and the regional manager of the company in North Africa. The meeting was attended by Minister of Communications and Information Technology Amr Talat. During the meeting, Madbouli praised cooperation between the Egyptian and Chinese sides. He said that President Sisi is giving great importance to getting close to the Chinese developmental expertise. Madbouli said that it is important for the Chinese company to take advantage of the positive atmosphere of cooperation to place more investments in Egypt, especially in the field of smart villages, technologies and other fields. For his part, the Chinese official said that his company is interested in the Egyptian market, saying that it is flexible in addressing the needs of the market and contributing with all the possible ways to, development, uh, to develop uh, many fields in Egypt. Minister Amr Talat said that the Egyptian side is keen on cooperating with the Chinese company in the field of technology transfer and artificial intelligence as well as the G5 communication technology. He said the Chinese company will implement the first experiment of such technology in the Cairo Stadium during the upcoming African Cup of Nations. في لحظة وإذا